happen. Um, in this session, we will discover how you can use the scripting environment of Eclipse to, in fact, unleash the, unleash the power of uh, your colleagues inside Eclipse, even those who don't want Eclipse and who don't want to use it. So to present myself, I'm Alain Bernard and I work in uh, Airbus since five years in the center of competence of flight physics. So quickly, what is flight physics is uh, the study of uh, the external physics who impacts uh, how the aircraft flies and operates. Basically, we have some, uh, we have five disciplines uh, which aims at studying the aerodynamics, so the wagon lift, uh, the mass of the aircraft, so the aircraft weight with passengers, without passengers, with fuel, without fuel, and so on. Performance, so um, study of takeoff and landing uh, criteria, uh, range of the aircraft, fuel consumption, and so on. And to deliver uh, software for these five domains, we have another one named Capabilities and Research, for which I am part of, and uh, which aims at, yes, uh, answering to all customer requests uh, for using uh, uh, the application. So uh, when I prepared the slide, I just realized that three years ago, I was in not the same room, but in the same building at Eclipse on France 2014. And I was giving a presentation how to make engineers life better with Eclipse. It was the really first year we deployed an Eclipse-based application in fly physics. And we had at that time a big problem about numerical Python libs. So basically we have, uh, as we have a lot of physicists, we have a lot of numerical algorithms written mostly in Python because of the powerful of the Python language for numerical analysis. And we had then a problem to integrate some Python library into an Eclipse-based workbench. And at that time, we were not able to really find a solution. Uh, and then years have passed, and we stayed with a dual problem, was that was, uh, can we allow the customization of the workbench by non-software engineers? That means people who don't want to make Eclipse plugin development, and who don't want to make Java software, and then can we allow to do so in Python, uh, so in the favorite uh, scripting language. So let me introduce EASE. So EASE is an Eclipse advanced scripting environment. Uh, it has been recognized as the most innovative project in 2016 by the Eclipse community. And to explain how we work, uh, the better is to uh, have a look on how we extend Eclipse uh, in the traditional way. So basically, you start to create an Eclipse plugin, you code it in Java, you test it in a separate Eclipse instance in a runtime, and when you are happy with it, uh, you build it and you deploy it into a P2 repository or directly in your uh, development Eclipse instance, and then you can enjoy your plugin. So basically, it is a few steps, even for uh, an Eclipse plugin developer, some of the steps are maybe tedious, and obviously for an uh, end user, it's completely uh, not possible to, to do so. This is much more simple because you only choose your favorite scripting language. You develop your Eclipse plugin in this language. You tell Eclipse where is located your script and you can enjoy your plugin, basically. So very three simple step. So how work is, uh, I will not get too much into details because uh, I'm not the main developer of EASE. Uh, I'm only using it. So EASE has that acts as an overlay of the Eclipse platform and all uh, its components. So basically, it provides you an access to uh, simplified APIs of the Eclipse platform. So for example, P2 API, user interface API, and so on. And it also can provide APIs on separate uh, Eclipse features. So for example, you have a NIST module for Git, another one for Papyrus, another one for SVN, uh, another one who can display charts and so on, and we will see later that you can even provide your pl plugin. And in also uh, make the connection between uh, the Eclipse world, uh, Java-based, uh, to other scripting language, uh, mainly uh, JVM-based language. So for example, you can uh, use a JavaScript with JVM interpreters. You can do Jiton, which is Python-like language uh, using uh, the JVM and so on. And you can also add your own language if you are enough clever for that. So let's do a small demo on some feature of Ease. So when starting Ease, you can use the scripting perspective, which is open uh, through the perspective toolbar. 
and you can just start to type command in your scripting language. So here it's JavaScript, and you can basically uh, do assignment of variable uh, operation, and also display, display stuff. Very simple, and the command are, the results are displayed here. So you can do uh, a set of commands like that, and you can also um, make, uh, use the API and the module provided by Ease to communicate uh, with the Eclipse platform. So basically, Ease comes with a set of modules which are displayed in the Modules Explorer here, and uh, in fact, it's all the modules are displayed in the system uh, components, and you have an access to all the modules you have installed for Ease. And for example, this one is a UI, which gives you access to a set of features of the UI of Eclipse. Basically, to import, you have to make the connection between the Ease runtime and your, the module you want to, to use, simply by drag and dropping the module into the interpreter, and then you have connected uh, Ease to uh, the module. And afterwards, you have a set of functions, and each function provides, in fact, also an help, uh, so you can see, uh, basically, how to use it directly in your uh, environment. And this help is automatically generated by uh, Ease when you create your own module. And then you can use uh, directly some function. So for example, we can use this one. And then uh, you have uh, the dialog uh, displayed. So here you have a launch from a JavaScript command, an SWT dialog directly inside Eclipse. You can do uh, more clever stuff. So for example, you can create projects uh, by using the resources modules, which provide you, in fact, a set of simplified API uh, to interact with the Eclipse workspace. So, for example, this single line will create a project inside the workspace and open it directly. So everyone who has already used the workspace APIs knows that uh, to create a project with a standard API of Eclipse is much more complex. But here, with a single line of script, we can create a project. In this project, we can also create a file And the file will be obviously displayed here. We can open it by having also a file and then so to be able to uh, modify it. And then close it to persist the modification. And if we open the file here, we will see that you have the text you have written in your script. So what is also interesting uh, with is and even more powerful is that you can you can use a set of uh, let's say magic keyword at the header of your scripts in commands that will in fact uh, modify uh, your environment uh, by adding a toolbar menu and specific commands so for example here i said that my script is named hello javascript and i want it to be put in the menu of the project explorer view as simple as that and if i expand the project the project explorer view menu I will find my command here automatically uh, created by Ease. And if I run it, it will obviously make a connection between the SWT world and JavaScript. So with, it, with this kind of stuff, you can really create a very quickly uh, function to extend your Eclipse, and we will see bit later on uh, even more powerful function. So when it comes to Python, what the interest were to uh, yeah, plug Eclipse with Python language, uh, because in fact, it's a really technical problem uh, if you want to use numerical libraries of the Python language. The first solution you have is to use Jiton, which is provided, uh, which provides a Python interpreter on top of a Java virtual machine. But in fact, uh, this is not compatible at all with C Python extension like uh, NumPy, SciPy, and all scientific libraries. You have also the JNI project, which aims to provide the same function than CPython uh, library inside uh, JITON, but it's uh, in an alpha state. It has only a limited support for NumPy. Uh, it doesn't support Windows platform, so too limited for uh, a production use. You have also JEP, which provides a Java native interface between uh, the JVM and the CPython interpreter, but uh, the support is not uh, fully compliant and you may have strange error, so for a user it's not, you cannot deploy that for an user. And finally, you have Py4j, 
which provides a bridge between uh, the Java virtual machine and C Python uh, interpreter. This Py4j library is in fact the most interesting one because uh, it's a lib library which does the bridge between Apache Spark library and its extension by Spark. So it's used in big data, it's really trendy, it's maintained and so on, so everyone like it. But when you want to interact uh, between the C Python interpreter and the Eclipse UI, you have another problem, is that uh, the Eclipse UI works on the SWT thread and you may know that the SWT thread is unique and you have to perform all UI operation in this thread or otherwise you will have a, a beautiful SWT exception. So basically it was really complex. It was in fact solved by really clever guys. I uh, like to, to name them. Uh, they work a lot with the Py4G maintainer committer and they finally uh, found a solution uh, which technically I cannot explain because I don't understand anything but the most important part is that now it works and let's do some science inside Eclipse. So I go back to my workspace and here in is I will switch my interpreter into the Py4j interpreter. So now I'm in Python, so I can type as usual commands and I can also print some Python stuff. Yeah, nothing magic here, but the magic starts wet when I will have to import NumPy library, for example. And after a while, the NumPy has been imported without error. And to demonstrate that, I will just use a very simple NumPy interpolation, linear interpolation function to show you that we all, in fact, access from the Eclipse environment to the NumPy function delivered. Uh, by the library to perform a simple, very simple interpolation. The interpreter is also resilient to the Python syntax. So for example, if I want to make a loop, I have a message saying that uh, more inputs is needed and if I doesn't respect the indentation, I have a Python indentation error. But if I respect it, I will have uh, a set of numbers displayed in my console, obviously. So now we have access to um, Eclipse Word inside Python, and I will demonstrate it with uh, my uh, Eclipse example, which creates a project inside the workspace. And when you have uh, put it a set of uh, is command inside a, a, your script file, be it a JavaScript file or a Python file, you can run it, and an, an, an is a script which basically uh, launch a script and in this case, create a project with a file and with some content in it. And the very interesting thing is that if we compare the two files doing the same thing within the two language, we will see that the only difference is in fact the syntax of the language and the name we, we gave for the project. So it means that you can exchange your script between your, your, your user and modulo the, the syntax differences between the two languages, they will use in, in fact the same function to access the Eclipse APIs. So the, it doesn't matter what they do with. So when it becomes interesting, it's not only for, for your customer and your user because uh, you may also want as an Eclipse developer to automate some stuff. Let's say, imagine you have a Java project here and you want only to scan it to detect each uh, time in the file you have done a system.out.println uh, instead of using a logger. And you can maybe use this script, which is in fact uh, an example provided by is directly that I only converted to Python, which will create in fact marker in the workspace. So let's run it. And you have your task view with the three, the three created to do marker. And if you double click on it, you will see basically that uh, you have found the way, the, the places where you have the system.out.println in your Java project. So it's very efficient to automate even developer tasks. Uh, I don't know how many, how many time you, you spend uh, updating the version in the manifest of your plugins, but for me it's, it was painful and with ease I can create a very simple script. And what is very interesting also is that uh, in ease you have access to the Java objects directly. So for example, here the file object is in fact uh, of type i file provided by the eclipse.org.eclipse.core.resources plugin. And you have access directly to the Java API create marker with uh, 
and you can use also Java classes and Java constant directly inside the, your scripting language. That means that even if the API uh, has not been provided in the is module, you can even use a uh, standard Java function and so on, and all the binding are done magically by is. So, providing your own module is as easy as using is. <laughs> And you just have to register a module in an extension point of is and provide a simple class which extends abstract script module. And you will just provide some function with standard parameters and just uh, put the annotation at work to script at the beginning of your function so that is can recognize this function as to be exported in the scripting language. You can uh, develop your, your function in Java, obviously. And you can also put optional parameters as uh, every scripting language support uh, optional parameters. You can put uh, at script or parameter annotation and it will take in argument the default value you want to put inside and uh, convert this string value into the type, the required type of the argument. That means that you can even provide complex function uh, parameters but hide this complexity to your user. And after that, they, they will be able to use it using uh, your specified module here, uh, displayed in the module explorer with uh, the help uh, generated by is afterwards. So it's really powerful and obviously when we started to deploy is inside Airbus, we then created our Airbus modules, obviously. So that means uh, the goal was really to hide the complexity of, uh, you know we are in a big company, if you have a lot of complexity in terms of IT infrastructure, you may have to connect to databases using a single sign-on stuff, etc. So it's very complex to user to deal with that kind of problem inside their business scripts. And here we were able to hide this complexity by providing modules that export function already available in the environment, this environment, uh, to use user to our customers, and then they want they have now a catalog of available uh, functions that they can use to perform numerical analysis and so on. And for example, we have a visualization plugin here, which in fact displays, uh, provides a, an easy to use user interface to create apps, uh, graphs uh, a, la, a la Excel in fact. And, uh, but you always have two kinds of user. You have the user who just want to click on buttons and use user interface. And uh, you have the Python fans, you only want to do Python stuff. And you have to uh, keep a compromise uh, between them and then we were able to, in fact, provide to the Python fan a way to automate uh, the use of uh, the visualization module directly in, a, in a an Airbus module. So that means with this simple line of uh, with this simple line of Python, then we load a specific data format file, uh, which will hide the complexity of loading this file in Python because all the Java code is already existing in the environment. So it's, it's named CSV, but uh, it's an Airbus CSV, it's not standard CSV. And then you can put your X data, your Y data, create traces, and then put colors and so on, uh, put even filters, and then you can also, uh, with filters on sp some specific values and so on, and then if you run it as an ISO script, you will have directly uh, the traces module, which are completely uh, scripted by, by Python, and using a standard components and calling Java function inside. The interesting stuff also is that in this visualization module, you only have a set of about 10 or 12 functions. Whether the JV API uh, has most than 20 or 30 functions provided. So basically, you can hide the complexity of a Java or Eclipse API to your customers and just uh, provide them a subset of functions that are really uh, useful for them. Let's go further. You can, uh, I hope you have seen a bit the powerfulness of is, and let's go uh, even further. It's, that means let's use uh, one of the two most powerful uh, tools, I think, in, in Eclipse. So let's say if we can use is to script Eclipse Serious to create diagrams. So I don't know if you have used Serious uh, one time in your life, but when you create a Serious representation, you just have to have a modeling project with an EMF file behind, and then you will have to select a viewpoint so that it's already selected, and then you have to create a representation. So 
we are using a diagram and the viewpoint, and then you will have the representation created on your model, and you can open it in the serious session. So, yes, we have our family here. And uh, even for testing new diagrams, uh, having this set of uh, steps to do to create new representation, to save viewpoints and so on, can be, uh, let's say, a big painful. So let's see if, you, if we can uh, use ease to script uh, serious. And obviously, if I am here today, it's that uh, because it works. So we basically created a simple uh, serious API and then we load a file existing from this workspace. So in this case, I don't want to create an EMF resource myself. So I just copy the existing basic family sample. I create a project, uh, put this example EMF file in the project, and then start a serious session. So with one line, I will create the modeling project, uh, select the viewpoints, open the representation, and enjoy my diagram of the family. So yeah, that's all. Even better, we can maybe uh, add items to this diagram. So I will take more space. And just so, as usual, we load the module and we load the resources module to be able to uh, access to the workspace. We load our project and with the serious API, we can load the existing serious session because in serious, you always have to use a session of serious to manipulate. And then you can use, you can load the representation. So that means in this case is a person diagram. And you can also with serious get the root of your family. So that means you have access to the E object of the family. And if you do some uh, calls, so that means here I know by heart the API of the E object family, but you can uh, just type a standard Java function, and if we get the name of the first uh, people in the family, we have Paul, which is, I think, here, the grandpa, Paul. And then we can also create an instance, so we can invoke EMF function inside the editing domain of the EMF session of Sirius. So just create a man here, just create it here, and give him a name, so yes. Just, we have named it James. And afterwards, we will, uh, in fact, uh, say that James is a child of Paul, which is the first element of the family, and then the serious representation is already updated. So we can even create uh, some modules for some other uh, Eclipse function and so on. And you can do, it, in fact, everything you want. You can even script uh, Xtext, you can script everything uh, if you know the API of the, the plugin you want to script, you will be able to script it. So in terms of roadmap for ease, uh, so the 0 0.4 was, was released in, two, in December 2016. The 0 0.5 is planned uh, before EclipseCon Europe. With, uh, we hope, the support of cron jobs, that means background jobs that runs uh, continuously in, inside your workspace a better support of magic keywords, because today it's, it has to, it requires a bit of knowledge to handle properly some complex keywords. Uh, and in, an improved script unit test framework, because obviously you can do unit testing on your ease modules and your ease scripts. And in terms of Python integration, we hope to have a better Py4j integration with content assist and the support of Python, PyDev Python Pass, because today the Py4j integration relies on the system Python Pass and a debug support for Py4j. You have to know that Ease provides debug support for some languages of the JVM, not all, and uh, for the Python one, it's not done today. And also in the future plans of the Ease project, uh, we have the CDT integration, so providing a module to interact with CDT, and a support for other script locations. That means you will be able to customize your Eclipse with script located directly on a Git repository, on an SVN repository, and so on. And if you want more information, you can just go on the wiki of Ease directly. The only thing uh, that cannot do Ease, in fact, is to script Eclipse in VBA. So if you are a VBA committer, you can maybe try to do something, but today it's not possible. So thank you for your attention. And if you have questions, uh, don't hesitate. <laughs>